What's poppin' me, Hente? Your boy's back with yet another video. No, I haven't officially lost my mind considering the fact that I've just made two posts on Patreon within a day of each other. But, I've been really hard at work lately, and I've got some stuff I want to show off. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kick right into it. What we're gonna discuss today is gonna be the sub-weapons. And rather than sitting here and running my mouth about them, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and let the visuals speak for themselves. First up, the daggers. Fair warning, I did disable collisions because I am working on something with the script right now. That sound yeah. you hear means there's some cooldown for the dagger. Yeah. After we juice. As you can see, you can still throw him pretty fast, and I did give him his triple daggers from Rondo of Blood. I have no idea why they took it out and made it a single dagger in Symphony of the Night. I thought this was stupid. But the Rondo of Blood, or... Even better, the Supinus version of Rondo Blood. I forget the name of it at the moment, but it was ridiculous how powerful the daggers were in that game. They were very, very helpful, so I'm looking forward to returning the daggers to their former glory. Next up, I want to ask you all something. And that is, what do you think of these results? Same thing, it's got some cooldown. If you hear that error sounds, because I keep jamming on the button over and over. Slight cooldown to it. I'll explain more about that in a little bit going to skip over holy water for the moment because I want to discuss a couple things with that so let's look at instead my favorite weapon personally the cross yeah there's that cooldown again ha! interesting thing about the cross is if you'll notice the trails yeah. don't disappear when the cross does they disappear at the same exposition that's a little intricacy that I had to catch on to myself the hard way when I realized they were disappearing all at once together and then looked at the original. The axe is also an interesting one because the trails for that one have a pattern of uh, there's four of them and right as the first one disappears and the after the right after the first one disappears it repositions itself over the axe and the loop starts over so you always have four trails going on once the initial animation has time to complete beginning that is. Next up, Bible. Yes, I went back to the Rondo one. The pages don't hit enemies. The Bible does, but I made it so that it spirals out as fast as about in uh, Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance. But the circles don't increase as quickly, making it easier to hit enemies with it. The pages do block projectiles, so this kind of functions as a makeshift shield while still being able to do damage. Excuse the fact that some of the sound effects are off, that's because I haven't equalized the volume on all of them just yet. Now a particularly intricate one, the stopwatch. You'll notice the candle stopped in the background, since I don't have any enemies on screen, I just figured I'd do it with the candles instead to stop time. And I found a glitch, right as I was talking to all of you. Give me a second, I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly fix that. Okay, that was just literally changing one number. Let's try this again. This one was actually an interesting one to work with because the original one is very glitched. Um, the motion on if you watch it carefully compared to this one, it'll sometimes jump in one direction and immediately jump to the other. It's supposed to bob back and forth like this, but there's some glitches in the code. The timing is also off when it comes to the sounds in the original game. It's supposed to hop right as the sound begins, but it doesn't. I did correct all those bugs. I also improved on the end animation where it disappears. It has some alpha in there now, so it looks like it's actually disappearing and not just randomly stretching out and then gone just like that like not fading out but just instantly gone from a bunch goes from a bunch of white pixels on screen to they're just not there which didn't look as good a minor thing but again the idea is not to rep for everything is to improve on it and last but not least the holy water which I'll say up front I do like the cross better but the holy water is so intricate and advanced that it makes the rest of them look like a joke which is funny because it's actually one of the most simplistic effects in the game. And that that right there, let me show you all what the animation for that is. Or the sprites for that is. It's right here. It's just a blue fireball. That's all there is to it. In the original game, there's actually a glitch with the sprite, a 
color glitch where there's a couple of green pixels. I left it in though because it does add a nice little effect. And there are actually some other pixels that are rendered invisible. I couldn't find the original color palette for this. I looked high and low and I just could not find it. So I got this as close as possible to the original, but I'm pretty sure it's 99.9% .9 correct. Let's put it that way. I spent several hours examining it, but that's the fireball. The flames right there, rather. It's just a blue fireball. They add some wave distortion to it, which I did via a shader. And there's also some scaling on it. The pivot point is set on the right of the fireball, and then the fireball is rotated so it scales up from the floor upward, it looks like. The bottle itself is actually funny, too, because if you look at it very carefully, when it hits the ground, there's some blue shards there. Those are actually sprites, not particles. And it's six very little ones. Um, excuse me. It's, um... Yeah, I think it's six very little ones. I don't remember off the top of my head at the moment. It's either six or eight. But there's actually a pattern to it. And then there's some particles in there as well. Some grayish blue particles. But it's interesting because there's a lot of things combined here to make that look good. And yet it's all very simple, low-level stuff. I also improved on the AI some in that now if you throw your holy water and it hits a wall, you'll notice it comes back in the direction it came from, so it's not just sitting here anymore, infinitely creating a flame in one spot, which is next to useless. And if you throw it against the wall, it no longer bounces back if it's in the air. If I do it right here, you'll notice it keeps going forward. On the other hand, if I do it here, you're going to notice it's going to come back towards me. And that's so that this way, if let's say you throw this and you want it to go forward at a wall in the air, it'll still go forward and hit the enemy. But if it hits a dead end, as in there's just nowhere for it to go, because it hits a wall here and then there's a floor, it's going to just go in the opposite direction so that, and if I could just nail the target, that would be nice. <laughs> but it'll basically go back in the opposite direction so that it's not just sitting there in one spot creating a flame and being next to useless. If I was to put two solid tiles next to each other, it would create a little fire pit, which... Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's a minor thing, but again, little tweaks like this make it much more useful and make it so you don't have to be as accurate with your attacks. Let me see. Tile mapping. I'm going to need a solid tile in the scene view. Let's just put them... Hold up. Let's do this. Move him over a little bit. Let's put this other one right here let's make them visible in the scene view because right now they are not and now let's see if I can nail the target it should bounce back and forth between them if I get it in the middle there it did not and as you can see here's the reason why I set the layer tag wrong just now I was in a rush one more time notice it bounces back and forth there so you have a little fire pit going on basically the other thing about this is the collisions have definitely been improved on it. It'll go smoothly down slopes ha! and up slopes. So it was pretty advanced. The movement engine for this was very advanced compared to the dagger itself. But I'm very happy with the results. And as for Richter's animations, well, I will tell you from the Bible has a much quicker one. And I'm going to go ahead and switch back to that because the Bible's, as I said, designed to be more of a defensive weapon. It still does good damage, but... Those pages block projectiles, which means you can use it as a makeshift shield to dash in and assail your enemies while it's going off and keep yourself even safer. But you'll notice the animation right now is ultra short for that reason. Because this is, and again, I'm sorry that the sound is so annoyingly loud. It's again designed to something that you can use to assail your enemies while you're being protected. While you're being protected. Go! Ha! I also added in one or two new animations. If you stop dashing now, it'll actually roll, and that has a little bit of invulnerability to it if you press down. If you just press forward, it just comes to a normal stop. As you can see, the controls got even looser is the term I want to use for it, because you can cancel a lot more things now a lot quicker, as you can see. In fact, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and change our sub-weapons to something that has a normal sub-weapon time. Let's go to the cross. And let's briefly do this. See how I'm canceling moves here? Very helpful. Go. 
for those who haven't seen his moveset, he also has a double backstep now. Please excuse this first backstepping animation. I'm still working on finding an artist to redo it into a ground backflip into the regular one, as you're about to see now. And it does have some cool down. That's that quick flash of white. Because I'm putting in a lot more iframes to this. Obviously, if you use the backflip there, it takes a little longer. You're not invulnerable when you land, but as you can see, you can cancel that by just jumping out of it. Or doing a move of some kind. But he has a double backstep, basically. And again, there's some iframes involved in that now, so it's a lot more useful. And the slide is designed to be something that'll pop up enemies too, so you can slide it in and start attacking them. Or just slide in, pop them up, and then do that to launch them even further into the air and do a bunch of hits with your rising slash. So, that's all I really want to talk about today. Hopefully you guys are liking the progress you're seeing here. The next video I'm going to put up is going to be for the crashes, which the actual animations for Richter are done, but I have to go ahead and finish the graphics off for each of the attacks. I should be done with that in the next week or two at extreme most. Also, I did say I would talk about cooldown, so let me briefly mention it. That error sound you heard playing during the video was because the sub-weapon's cooldown wasn't over yet. Of course, that'll be part of the HUD. You'll be able to see how long the cooldown is. The double and triple shot are being included in the game and do cut down the cooldown, so there is some progression to that for a legacy character like Old Richter or Child Maria. Um, so you do get some power as the game goes on. You know, by the end, you'll be machine gun firing off daggers and axes. Let's put it that way, and you'll be able to shoot more, have more than one Bible on screen, stuff like that to make you feel more powerful. As more enemies are dropped on you all at once that are more dangerous, quicker, better AI, etc. To balance things out. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the obvious, because there is no rebound gem, Vibuti, or Agnia shown. Um, rebound gem is not going to be included for Richter, because for him, it's just overall a useless weapon. Now, I do have another character in mind that I want to give it to, heavily modified, that I think it'll be useful for. Vibuti is a joke compared to the Holy Water and totally redundant. So again, leaving it out for him, I have another character I want to give it to and give it a petrifying kind of attack. And the Agni has already been given Alucard. It's a magic-based lightning attack. It's been heavily modified. I have no idea why they gave that thing to Richter. It feels so out of place for him. I just yanked it out and didn't look back. Alucard, on the other hand, having a dark lightning attack works out perfectly so that's it for this video but what do you guys think of what you saw here do you like the results do you like the ideas i have here do you have your own ideas for the sub weapons feel free to leave them in the comments on this youtube video also um i do have a thread up on the facebook group as well as on the patreon page asking for feedback on child maria's moveset so if you want to contribute an idea that i need I, something i need ideas for asap it won't cost you a dime Feel free to respond to that. Um, if you want to join the Patreon page or make a one-time donation, links will be down below. Links to the Facebook group and the forums will be down below as always. Other than that, that's it. I'm out. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there and healthy. I appreciate all the support I've been getting from each and every one of you. And I will talk to you all soon. Peace.